Nick Smith. I'm at live in Vegas right now at the pre-NAB show. This is where we go before NAB to see the latest in technology and learn about all the cool trends that are happening. So I'm with Hyro from Vegas Inferno. Yes, We're sir. here to talk about eSports. So Hyro, how in the world did you get into this? Dude, that's a long story, man. So uh, I started in 2012, so in high school. So I'm 28 now. <laughs> I started graphic designing for uh, Call of Duty teams back in the day. Uh, so I, I learned how to graphic design because I was playing video games like Modern Warfare 3. I was like, man, dude, I really want to play video games for the rest of my life. And I was like, why not? <laughs> right now, Who right? doesn't? Yeah. Come on. So it's like I started learning graphics and I started working for businesses like uh, Strictly Business and now Esports, some FaZe Clan members and started learning my way into that. And I was like, I want to learn how to do just a, my own organization, you know? So throughout the years, you know, from 2012 till now, I was always learning, uh, you know, and just learning from management. And that's how I just got into starting my own organization. And how'd you get to Inferno? Wow, dude, uh, started January 6, 2020. So I actually were, was working a job, uh, got let go of that, the business went under. So I was like, man, I need something to do. <laughs> like, <laughs> I need something to do, I man. I like video games, I need something to do, okay. Yeah. yeah, I like video games, I need something to do. And I was like, what do I do? What do I do? And I started uh, Vegas Inferno, I started looking at the city, uh, what we're trying to accomplish, you know, all the all the missions that we're trying to do in esports. And I'm like, I'm gonna work for myself. I'm gonna give myself the whole, the year of 2020 and see what I can do as a business owner. And now we're here. That's killer. Yeah. All right, so you've got Inferno. I yep. mean, you guys are out there playing tournaments. You're building a great team. What so far has been your favorite tournament that you have? Favorite tournament ever? Are we talking LAN or online? Either or. Either or? I will say the RLCS, uh, Rocket League. So Rocket League spring, uh, spring split. We had the top five uh, South America team in Brazil, nice. and we're competing against some uh, major talent out there. So that's probably been my favorite one. What, what was it about it? I mean, what made it such a hallmark for you? Because we never been in the Rocket League scene. So the RLCS is very staple. And for me, we've always been the amateur team. Of, like we never made it to that level of having our logo on the big screen, have 300,000 people watching us online. And when, as soon as we made it to that level, that for me said, wow, we actually made it somewhere, right? And that esports. Yeah. And it's like, we're coming against 100 Thieves, Team Liquid, you know, Cloud9, all those organizations. Dude, that made, you know, it made it special for me, so. Okay, so for that's your favorite, what was the worst tournament you ever played in? Worst tournament I've ever, oh my goodness, dude. <laughs> that's hard to say, bro. Yeah? I, I, honestly, it's hard because- You don't want to make anybody mad, is that what I'm hearing? It's, it's not that, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's not that, it's like, I just love esports, man. Yeah. I love the I love the industry. I love the culture about it. So I can never say it's like, oh, you know, maybe bad placements. Yeah. But I love everything. I I love what I do. Yeah. I really do, and I like going to these events. So every event for me is amazing. Yeah, I learned something early in life. Somebody told me, find something you do for free anyway, and make that your career. Yep. Because then you'll never hate going to work. Exactly, right. dude. I wake up every day. I used to wake up hating my life because I hated going to a job. You know, I work a nine to five. Work for someone else. Now I wake up every day, I'm excited to wake up. I'm excited to do something, you know, whether it's on the computer or in person like this, I, I really like it because I love what I do. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so from a team standpoint, are you guys traveling more to go to games or are you mostly playing online and, and playing remote? Uh, mostly remote right now. So we're developing a new culture in Inferno. We're doing Call of Duty, Rocket League, Madden, 2K. So we do have an NBA team, uh, 2K League team right now uh, called Vegas Dogs. So we're trying to compete for the league spot next year. Uh, we're going back into RLCS hopefully next month. So that hasn't been announced yet. Uh, so by the time this comes out, hopefully we're being the RLCS for North America. But uh, hopefully we'll start traveling more. I, I like it. And so what of all those games, what's your favorite? <sighs> Call of Duty. As much as, yes. much as I hate it. Yes. As much as I hate it, dude. <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> I love it. Hate? I love COD and hate COD. But yeah. COD is just... I was born in the era of the Call of Duty, yeah. and I come from the Call of Duty community. So for me, like my first event ever was Call of Duty World Championships XP back in 2013, or you know, in LA with Nate Shot, Optic, and Phase, and all these teams going again. That caught us all day. So it's funny. I come from Doom, Castle Wolfenstein, like the original first-person shooters. So like Call of Duty, those games always have a soft spot in my heart because that's. My my first gaming was always done that way, right? Right. Uh, you know, going all the way back to the original stuff. So, Call of Duty is always going to be my favorite. Yep. You know, it's, it's just 
I, and it's the one that I can come home, I can pick up a controller, I can go smash for a little while, and then I can walk away and be okay, because it's not like, there's not a long story arc here. Mm. I can get some aggression out, get some enjoyment in, you know, mod up a, 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 you know, one of my guns, and then just keep going. Dude, right? it's, it's an amazing game, dude. I love it. As much as I, I can't stand it sometimes, I, I still love it. And it's just, it's the core of what made esports esports, yeah. I feel like, so. Now, the, the monetization part is the part that drives me crazy, right? I always want to keep dropping more quarters. Dude, I dropped, I don't even want to talk how much money I've dropped and caught. For Warzone 1 that came out, yes. I probably dropped over 10 grand. Oh my God. It's not fun. Okay, but that's your career, <laughs> so it makes sense, right? Yeah, yep. I've spent that much on computers and cameras yep, in my day, yep, so yep. It, it's fair, it's fair. <laughs> okay, so every gamer's got their, their uh, I would say, stimulant of choice to keep gaming. What's yours? I mean, is it is it coffee? Is where's your, where do you get your juice from? So we are currently sponsored by One Shot Energy. Okay, so I'm gonna say it's One Shot Energy. Then. Yeah, let's... Right, where's our shot? Come on. <laughs> one Shot Energy. So One Shot Energy is actually a chewable uh, candy that gives you 75 milligrams caffeine for every chewable. So you take two of those, you're pretty much wired throughout the day. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying it's because we are sponsored by them, because they use code LBI, but hey, I'm also... <laughs> but you know what I like about that one? Is your hands are still free. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. You don't have to worry about, you know, drinking something, you pop it in, you're done. And I've noticed a big change. I mean, I play a lot of Call of Duty ranked now, and I just, I'm eight hours in, because I didn't even know it was eight hours. I have any lunch, I have any dinner. I'm still just grinding, dude, so... Yep. Okay, so you've been in the industry long enough now to kind of see some evolution. Yep. Where do you see it going next? What do you think the next big is, or where, where does it pivot to? So, I think it's models like ours. So, and I say this because the last three years I've seen the, bub the bubble that's been trying to pop lately. You know, unfortunately a lot of CLG, 100 Thieves are laying off a lot of people, closing up shop, merging with esports, other entities. We've seen this three years ago that it was going to happen because there was never a a ROI, how to make a business. You know, originally, you get you start a business to make money, right? That's the whole goal, that's a mission for it. And a lot of companies didn't do that, they invested it. So I think it starts from the ground up, grassroots community, Las Vegas or city-based communities, and building that fan base up so they see that, hey, there's a community here and working towards that goal of, I can buy merchandise, I can buy game skins, whatever, because we do that. Um, you know, lifestyle also, like, you know, how I explained it earlier, yeah, you can be a fan of, a, let's say the Lakers, but if you're a diehard fan, you're gonna buy it. But if you're not a diehard fan, you're not gonna buy a Lakers merch, right? But in our case, we're an esports, so we can you know, drop like clothing like this that is streetwear and say this is pretty cool. I don't know who Las Vegas Inferno is, but this is cool. But I, I like want to buy shirt. it, right? But I like the shirt, so I'm gonna go buy it. And that's how we're trying to build a culture now. So that's where I see the industry going towards. What do you think's missing right now from the industry? Stardom. I think stardom is one of the key factors. I think a stadium is missing, like uh, normal traditional sports. I don't think there's a uh, enough uh, people here that want to watch esports every single other day, like a traditional hockey stadium. Um, I mean, there's definitely some stadiums out there. I mean, you look like the one being built in Pennsylvania. There is some big facilities, but not as many. Obviously. Exactly. There's not as many as far as like you can go buy tickets. You can go watch your favorite team play. You know, at day in, day out, just like the Golden Knights or yeah. like the you know the the Lakers or whoever, right? Um, and then Stardom. You have those diehard like Ninja. Everyone knows Ninja. Yeah, yeah. Everyone knows Nick Merckx. Everyone knows Nate Shot. But it's, you know, some people really don't know them because they're not in the community. They're not in the Call of Duty community. So how do you how do you capture the casual competitive community with those star players? And it's about the marketing, right? So everyone who Steph knows who Steph Curry is or LeBron James or Kobe Bryant, right? Michael Jordan. But who? Name me one athlete in esports that you know besides Ninja. Yeah. It's hard. So, what's going to change that? I think with us, I, that's what we're trying to do. I think if with we've developed players in the past that have gone to like complexity, a hundred thieves, base clan. So we developed these players that when they were just starting out. So it's all about marketing. I think yeah. if you have a right team behind you and with the players and they market, listen, you can make the worst players look like they're amazing star athletes or amazing players. It's all about the marketing and doing events like these, having people show up, knowing the player, who they are. I think that will change the atmosphere. Now, a lot of those players have become solo Twitch streamers, yep. right? Where you guys are taking a team approach. Do you, uh, I mean, how do you balance that out, the individual personality versus the team, you know, what's good for the team? Yeah, so we treat it as 
everyone who's on their team supports one another. Retweets, likes, shares their stuff, uh, activates during uh, different uh, events or different videos, supporting things like that. So it's taking the team approach and building it together instead of saying, hey, I'm gonna start YouTube streamer or, or YouTube uh, Twitch streamer, whoever, right? Instead of saying like that, you're, you're part of something much bigger than yourself. Yeah. And with being part of Vegas Inferno, it's about supporting one another, building that culture, making sure that everyone is uplifting each other so that way it's bigger than something else. So. Yeah, it's interesting because traditional athletes sort of have to be the, um, you know, all they got to do is be good at the ball they play, right? Yep. Whereas, you know, I look at sort of the, the eSports environment where you guys sit, you've got to be business managers, you got to be content creators, you have to be your own marketing team, and also, oh yeah, you got to be really good at the game you're yep. playing too, right? Yep. It's like, so there's definitely more to the personalities that get into this but it also is means that there's more more personalities that can be in this. Exactly. Right? I mean, there's only so many Michael Jordans, but there's a lot of great gamers here today. A hundred percent, and that's the and that's the thing with you know whether you own a, a esports industry, uh, a esports business, or you're a staffing, or you're a content creator, you can still make your own presence known. Like for me, I might be an owner of Vegas Inferno, but I also do live streaming. I also do YouTube. I also edit. I do graphic designing on the side. So there's so many different careers they can do in esports that a lot of these creators are taking advantage of, right? It's like, yeah, I'm a Twitch streamer, but I also uh, make content on YouTube, TikTok, Kick. You name it, I'm making content 24-7, whether you know it or not, and eventually they're gonna find it. So, from a from a broadcast side, I mean, sports has traditional broadcast distribution, right? Yep. You can turn on any TV and you can find sports. Yep. Do you think having that type of presence for eSports is possible and would help, or is this traditional YouTube, Twitch, live streams the better place for it? I personally believe you need a picture of both. So I think that that what's hurting the industry right now, there's no distribution to ESPN, Hulu, Netflix, so you name it, right? Like your tra traditional sports, Fox, News, whatever. Esports doesn't have that. I can't go on TV and watch League of Legends, Valorant, Call I can't do that. I would love to do that. Yeah. I feel that the publishers need to open that uh, opportunity for other distributors to make that a reality so it can get more aware of what the sport is. Yeah. Because right now, the people who are aware of what esports is, is the same people who are watching day in and day out on Twitch, on YouTube. They're gamers. Are gamers. Yeah. And that's it, right? You're not attracting the maybe the 45 year olds or the, uh, yeah, you know, the older generation, because the newer generation is just watching it on Twitch. But do you think those gamers are connected to the sport because it's their game? I think so. And maybe the older ones never played that game, so it's not as connected. Yeah. I mean, it's not like we're gonna see Miss Pac-Man tournaments anytime soon. Right. Right, but I mean, so I think almost to a certain degree, this is a, a market that's going to evolve. My kids, their kids, they're all gonna be gamers and have more access to content, yep. right? Because it'll already be there. You guys are setting the groundwork yep. for that next generation to have their sport from the day they're born to the day they stop gaming. Exactly, it's like for me, right? I'm a big basketball fan, but I wasn't born during the, when basketball first got, got invented, right? I grew up watching basketball because I had access to basketball. Yep. Same was, thing as the it kids. It was part of your life. Exactly, yeah. same thing as the next generation. Like you said, it's going to happen. They're gonna be already have the content, the Twitch and everything, but I still, think that we're missing the key factor of distributing to ESPN and those, those cable channels. Probably time to start a new one. Hey, why not, you know? I love it. So, Listen, Iro, thanks for being here. Thank you, man. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. All right, this has been NAB 2023 with Hyro and the Vegas Inferno. Big shout out and thanks to them for coming out and playing at the show. And you can, where can everybody see you? Uh, be personally at Glyphics or check us out at Vegas Inferno and all social media platforms. Love it. All right. All right. Thanks again. Let's do it.